This is WCN, the Whole Care Network. You talk, we listen. Content presented on the following podcast is for information purposes only. Views and opinions expressed during this podcast are solely those of the individuals involved and do not necessarily represent views of the Whole Care Network. Always consult your physician for medical and fitness advice, and always consult your attorney for legal advice. And thank you for listening to the Whole Care Network. It shouldn't be this hard, a- along with all of the challenges that it ha- that comes financially, emotionally, medically with being a caregiver. Something as simple as products shouldn't be an issue, right? Caring for aging parents or other loved ones while working, raising children, and trying to live your own life? Wondering how to find the time for your personal health and happiness? Well, you're in the right place. Welcome to the Happy Healthy Caregiver Podcast, the show where real family caregivers share how to be happy and healthy while caring for others. Now, here's your host, family caregiver and certified caregiving consultant, Elizabeth Miller. Hello, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to the Happy Healthy Caregiver Podcast on the Whole Care Network. If this is your first time listening, welcome. This is a podcast produced bi-weekly to help family caregivers integrate self-care and caregiving into their lives. Each episode has an accompanying show notes page, so if you'd like more details about the topics, products, and resources we speak about, you'll find the show notes by going on to the website, happyhealthycaregiver.com, and underneath the podcast menu, click the image for today's show. You are going to want to join the Happy Healthy Caregiver email list to stay up to date on all the podcast happenings. And when you do, you'll also receive essential announcements, upcoming events, special offers, and a whole lot more. Visit bit.ly forward slash HHCE news to subscribe. Before we get into today's caregiver spotlight, I want to first shine the light on our episode sponsor. When you become a caregiver, you have lots of questions. CareWell is here to help. It's your shop for everything caregiving. Great products like Depend, Ensure, and Tranquility at prices you'll love, with real caregiving specialists available 24-7 ready to help. Plus, fast, free, one to two day shipping. Caregiving isn't easy, but you don't have to do it alone. Visit CareWell at bit.ly forward slash CareWell shop today and save 30% on your first auto ship order. In this Caregiver Spotlight episode, meet Bianca Padilla. Bianca's experiences caring for her grandma inspired her to start CareWell along with her husband, John, a family-founded company that simplifies life for caregivers by providing personalized service, compassionate content, and expert vetted home care products. In this episode, Bianca and I talk about how her family came together to create a care plan, how to seek bilingual health care accommodations, long-term care insurance, work-life boundaries, training care compassionate employees, and we even discuss how the laundry actually gets done. Hi, Bianca. So nice to meet you. Thanks for joining the Happy Healthy Caregiver podcast today. Absolutely. And thanks for having me, Elizabeth. I am excited to dive in and talk all kinds of things. Shopping in particular is one of my favorite topics, Um, especially now I have spring fever and I want to do shopping. Uh, I, we start off all the shows though, with pulling some words of inspiration, wisdom, whatever I felt like capturing in the happy, healthy caregiver jar. Would love to get your thoughts on this. Ah, this is me good for you as a busy working woman. Um, (laughs) behind every great woman, there is a tremendous pile of laundry. (laughs) Not behind this woman because my husband absolutely just takes care of everything in the home and he literally does laundry like every three days. So I'm very, very lucky to have him and I I couldn't do this without him, to be honest. So he's also your business partner, right? He is. He's my co-founder. Yes. So he's he's just as busy, but he finds the time. Well, and maybe he likes to do laundry. There is something about like starting and finishing something that can be very therapeutic. That's true. He likes to put it in, but I'm the one who has to take it out. (laughs) That sounds very familiar with my husband and my son. They think you can just like live out of the dryer. But I try to explain, like, if you can get these things out and up, you can save yourself the ironing, which is I won't buy in anything that needs to be ironed. That sounds miserable. He just pops it back in and throws it back on and 
Oh, I know. That's why we love them. Um, well, this is this is awesome. Well, we met, uh, I know, because as a disclaimer, CareWell is one of my wonderful, happy, healthy caregiver partners that make all the things that I do, um, the podcast and blogging and complimentary coaching and all of that possible. So I just want to say thank you, Bianca, for that and for being a partner and having a mutual passion for helping caregivers. Absolutely. I mean, it's one of the best things about starting this business is that we can support people like you, support so many uh, caregivers in the community and build, really build and help build a community that is so needed. And so thank you for having me today. And and thanks for the partnership. Yes. We'll keep that one going. Well, tell us, I mean, you're more than just a business owner and a partner of Happy Healthy Caregiver. You have a whole caregiving story of your own. So let's start there. How did you wind up to have a role of being a caregiver? Sure. I mean, uh, like most of us, very unexpectedly, I uh, had just moved home from college uh, and I was about to go to a different school, a coding school. And uh, right then my grandmother has um, surgery and it leaves her nearly immobile. And my grandmother lives with us. Um, So it's me, my mom, my grandma, my little sister. So all women in the household, multi-generational, English and Spanish. And it was the first time that we really had to step up and, and help her. You know, this is someone who raised us, you know, she helped my mom who was a single mom. Um, and so it was, it was quite a shock to us, uh, to have to, you know, help her change diapers, to take her to the bathroom and do all of these things. And, um, she's got a big personality. I mean, she's a really funny person, um, could be very hard headed, which makes her even funnier. And, um, you know, it was definitely, and it still is a very emotional time, you know, that she just can't get around. She, you know, is pretty much bed bound, um, And, um, and so of course, you know, when we bring her home from the rehab center, I asked my mom, you know, how can I help? We're, we're in this together. And one of the things she's like, okay, go get us the supplies. I don't know where to get this stuff. And so of course I I go to the stores and I'm like, okay, I have no idea. How do, how do I do this? And, you know, all of the competitors that the retail competitors have nothing. I go to a local store. That's like a DME type store. And I'm just in shock. Cause it looks like this is like out of the eighties. What's like, a DME are, type store. First of all, it's, it's like, it's a durable medical equipment store. And ah. if you ever go to one of these, they're like in random shopping centers all over the U S and the prices are astronomical. The selection is terrible. The quality of products just is awful. Um, and th- the good thing is that they do help you select items, you know, cause they're typically mom and pop shops, but I thought this is a huge problem. We need supplies all the time how has nobody solved this? Right. And I come from an entrepreneur, entrepreneurial background. My dad's an entrepreneur. And I just thought this is a problem that needs to be solved. I mean, it shouldn't be this hard a- along with all of the challenges that it, ha- that comes financially, emotionally, medically with being a caregiver, something as simple as products shouldn't be an issue. Right. And so, um, Fast forward, I ended up meeting my husband on a first date, um, a blind date pretty much. And he told me about an adult diaper subscription service that he was uh, considering starting. And I was like, I love that idea. I would use that idea. Here's, I shared my experience and we partnered and um, started the business together and and the whole thing. And so he's been helping us uh, provide uh, care to my grandmother and and building a business. And um, it's been really an, an incredible opportunity to be able to mix these two things that I love business and, um, being a caregiver and helping caregivers and building a community. Um, I, we both feel incredibly lucky. Yeah. It's well, I mean, so many things you shared there, it's so hard to watch people that you love, like continue to decline, you know, unlike, um, when I raise my kids, you know, they do more and more for themselves and then watching your older loved ones, older adults do less and less for themselves is, is hard and, and it sounds like you're still in the thick of it, frankly. Um, and it's what a worse, yeah. Yes. So it's, and then the end, you know, is is not pleasant either. And then you're left, you know, uh, my grandfather recently passed away and uh, we were caring from him. Uh, he lives about 45 minutes away from us, but we would send him packages and food. And so he recently passed away, but it leaves like this, this hole of like, oh my gosh, it's somebody that you talk to every day. That's, that's, you know, I see my mom, you know, she lost her parent, you know, that source of love, that infinite love um, is, is no longer there. And then you see that as a child, you know, one day that's going to be me one day. That's going to be my mom who, who needs my care and, and, and won't be there. And so 
I try to think of it as like, I'm so lucky. Not everybody makes it um, to, to, to be a caregiver. Their parents might pass away early. My husband's grandmother did in her sixties, mm-hmm. one of my grandparents in, in their sixties as well, you know, and my mom's in her sixties right now. So now that I look at it as an adult, I'm like, wow, I'm, we're lucky that my grandparents are in their nineties. Right. And, and they're still, you know, telling us stories and making us laugh. And, and it really puts everything into perspective. Um, you know, when you're always looking at these generational challenges and the fact that, you know, life isn't forever. No. Um, so do you find yourself sometimes in the role of, you know, with my parents, I had a lot of comorbidities and it really impacted me to start happy, healthy caregiver because I didn't want to just keep that cycle going. Do you find yourself being a self-care bully? I call it but for your mom, <laughs> like, Hey mom, don't do oh, this. Absolutely. To me. Absolutely. So my mom actually works here with us. Um, you know, that. it really is a family business and, um, all the time, you know, cause we care so much, like truly we are a company that cares. We have a lot of family members that work here. And so every single order, my mom's checking to make sure it gets to the customer. If it doesn't, what went wrong so we can fix it. Um, and so a lot of times I'm, you know, up, uh, and I've been living with my mom during the pandemic. Uh, and I'm like, mom, you got to go to sleep. You got to take care of yourself. You know what I mean? Like this is bad for you. If you can't cut yourself off, I'm going to, I'm going to have to fire you, you know, like as a (laughs) joke, of course, but you know, I love her so much. I'm like, mom, you know, you have to take care of yourself. Um, And so what we do do is we've implemented routines. We walk every single day, every single day we take a walk and it's the best thing. One, how does that work out? Like you both are busy women. You're working, you're caregiving, like you know, I, I want to share that we have to disconnect. Is it scheduled? It's like six o'clock in the morning at night at night. Okay. So we're in Miami. So it's always warm or very perfect hot. There. Perfect there. Uh, and so it's really easy. And so she, uh, the team that she manages, they stop working at six. And so she helps me actually get out of the house and we've got dogs. And so we take them on a walk, but these walks for us are like an hour. Like we go so far and then we talk the whole time and we say, there's no, we cannot talk about work. Like we have a rule where it's like, nope, we totally shut off. We talk about TikTok or we talk about social media or we talk about whatever's happening. Um, And we just try to enjoy the time with each other as well. Cause again, it, it being a caregiver really puts life into perspective and um, it just is a reminder to like, not take any time for granted. And and that's, you know, the time. And my dad, um, lives pretty close to us. And so they're divorced, but we go visit him. And so he, he lives about two miles away from us. And so that's kind of like the routine. So get my, so both nice. my parents in, you know, try to visit my, my other grandma and, you know, make it family time when we can. And then sometimes I have to go back to work, unfortunately, but I try to make sure my mom does not because, um, I want to take care, make sure to take care of her mind and that she gets good sleep. And, um, I know people listening are like, well, who's making dinner and who's watching grandma at home while you guys are walking? Yeah. So my grandmother, um, you know, she will just stay in her room. So it's pretty easy. I also have a sister who, um, and an uncle who drops by quite often. Um, so he'll bring food, uh, many times. And then we have my grandmother on, um, uh, it's basically like a delivery service called in Spanish cantina. And so they'll bring food every day at like six o'clock. And so we make sure that, you know, she has food and, you know, she's a picky eater. She doesn't eat that much. So it's pretty easy. Um, How do you spell the service? Cause I'll link to it in the show notes. It's, it's like a little Cuban, like hole in the wall, right by where we live, but it's oh, for like Miami okay. Cuban food. Yeah. It's like Cuban food, which she loves. So it's rice, it's beans. And it's like things that, you know, she can eat that are sensitive for her stomach. I love um, it. And so that's kind of the time we're like, okay, she's fed. She eats really early, you know, like. 5 30 ish. Um, we feed the dogs and then right after we go on our walk. So it's, it's kind of like just built into the routine. Um, so my, my grandmother's pretty easy to take care of. Um, like I said, she's hilarious. She's a character. Um, it is super sad now to see her because, um, a lot of people have passed away in her life. You know, her husband has just passed away mm-hmm. her brother. So she's dealing with, you know, it, it's, it's depressing. Um, getting older and, and, and living and, and being one of the last, you know, living members of a family. And, um, you know, so we try to spend some time when we get back home and we try to keep her company. Um, but yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's a hard time. So I just try to keep a smile on her face. Yes. That's important when, you know, where have you found support, you know, before starting care? Well, where did you find support as a caregiver for your family? Oh, <laughs> 
Yeah, that's hard. You know, I have a trick question. I feel like I ask people. There's like not a lot of support, unfortunately. Like, you know, there's other family members who we can go to who are like nurses or doctors that we ask questions to. Uh, My grandmother has, uh, she, part of her insurance, she goes to like a medical center um, and they, they all speak Spanish because she speaks Spanish. And so that's been, you know, that's, that's one of the advice that I have is, especially if you're a Spanish speech or you're not a native English speaker, try to find um, providers that speak your language. It helps bring the person that you're caring for into the conversation and helps them feel confident in the decision that they're making um, when they speak the same language. And so, you know, that's been a huge support and they have, you know, a, a, a transportation system that helps pick her up when my mom has a meeting or something um, so that she can go to the doctor, go to like an event or something. And, um, you know, I guess the support really comes from family. You know, it really is a family, um, you know, task. And so my mom has a brother who, who lives nearby, who spends time with her. That's one of the biggest things is just like getting people to come and talk to her and see her and make her feel like she's, you know, a person who's still alive. Uh Um, you know, we, we, uh, connected her digitally. So she has a cell phone, she has access to Facebook. So that helps her connect with people. Go who grandma. Have a while. Yeah. And she's on the phone constantly. I don't know what she's talking about at all, <laughs> but she, <laughs> she calls like 20 people a day and I don't know what it is that they talk about, but they talk all day. And so at least she has, you know, um, a, a sense of like community still yeah. just, you know, through her own family members. Um, and then, you know, our family drama, uh, that she loves. And so, you know, I, That's wonderful. I really love, I, I, I think my grandma's like the funniest person. So. I, yes. Well, you and I are fortunate that we have like good family support systems um, for sure. Let's talk about care. Well, like how, so you, you talked about the date and how this idea started and your frustration with buying um, adult underwear and all that, which is relatable. I remember like a horror story I had with my mom is she had edema and she um, would retain water all the time. And I cannot tell you, Bianca, how many times, how many shoes I tried to buy for her. And I ended up getting like post-op shoes for her to wear. Like that's what she had to wear every day. Like, and she didn't have an operation. She just had such swollen feet. Like what a gift that would have been if I could like call up a company like Carewell and say, this is my situation and not have to go through that. That was like a, like brings up PTSD for me a little bit. Actually, it's one of the, the the really interesting parts of running this business is um, how much information we get through conversations with customers, right? And, and with caregivers. So it gives us an idea of what products need to be made. Mm-hmm. There's so many product ideas that need to be made. Like it frustrates me um, because when I look at like the baby market, I'm like, we have every invention ever yes. for babies, right? And like, they don't even care. <laughs> and then no. we have this massive demographic that's aging that we're all going to become, you know, older people one day, hopefully if we're lucky. Um, and, and we have no like great products. The products look like they're like for an assisted living facility, like for like a hospital system. Yes, there's very no sterile. Dignity. It's so sterile. Like there's no dignity in it. So one of our, um, you know, future and part of the vision of the company is to really bring to market some of the, 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 inventions and some of the the iterations on products that need to be there like uh like instead of a post-op shoe right can we just make better clothing right that is we make really really wide shoes for very very swollen feet (laughs) can we make that there's weird things like that right but that impact a lot of people right Mm -hmm. it's it's not just you like you didn't have that problem alone and similarly like we get requests you have you know uh toothbrushes you know that are have a thicker handle because my mom, you know, has arthritis and it hurts her to, to squeeze the handle, you know? And so things like yeah. that um, are really exciting. And, and right now we're not focused on that because there you know, requires a lot of investment. However, that's, you know, any um, it, to the community who's watching this, any ideas you guys have, please bring them to us. Right. So we can get them documented and we can start working with partners to, to bring those to life. I have another one. My sister put pool noodles on mom's bariatric bed because she kept whacking her arm like in dreams and stuff. And so she cut the pool noodle, but could we make those cute versus like fluorescent it's yellow a, with duct like tape? tennis balls at the bottom yeah. of the wall. I'm like, oh no, that's so bad. I would never want to, you know, and my yes. grandmother was like the same way. She's like, I don't want to use that. That's yes. for old people, you know? And like, 
We, imagine us using that, right? No, I got style. You have style. We don't want that. Exactly. Um, so that's a good at one. At some point, Bianca, I think too, like um, I know I've introduced y'all to, to people who start their own products. Like that's down the road too, right? Where you'll, you know, you're, right now you're working with main suppliers and people like yeah. Depend and um, so forth, um, Tina and all of those, but eventually some of these mom and pop kind of businesses. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I think that'll be exciting to, I love it. I call y'all an exquisite shop just for caregivers because who doesn't want to feel like that pretty woman moment where you're just like going in and being catered to. So that's wonderful. And do you, how do you train your staff to like talk to caregivers? So uh, our customer service team has been like foundational to who we are as a business. My husband and I actually, when we started the company, we went to the Disney Institute. And we got trained on how to scale quality service like they do, right? Which mm-hmm. is across the globe, across industries. Like it's insane what they've been able to do. And it feels so magical. And so we wanted to make sure that we bring those principles into running our customer care team at CareWell. Uh, so we've got an entire training program. We uh, they, they spend each customer care agent, first of all, has to go uh, through a hiring process. <laughs> So we are super, super careful around who we bring, right? I think the acceptance rate is like 7%. Um, So seven out of every hundred actually even make it um, to become a a care agent. And and then we train you, right? And that training, it's over a hundred hours of training full time. And we go through empathy training, right? What it's, what's it like? Because some of these people haven't been caregivers, although most of them have been around it or have been. Um, we can't scale to thousands of customer um, care people with just caregivers, right? There's not enough. Uh, and they're busy caring they're busy. for their families, right? Yeah. So we're like, okay, how do we instill the values of what it's like to be a caregiver? So they sit through videos, they go through uh, one that, that talks about the challenges that a caregiver faces on a daily basis, right? We really put them in their shoes so they, you, they can understand uh, what it's like and, um, and, and make sure that when they're providing that service, every touch point matters, right? This is a person who is emotional, they're overwhelmed, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so that's the empathy training portion. Uh, there's a portion, of course, the biggest portion is around the products themselves. So we uh, partner closely with the manufacturers and we let them know, or yeah, essentially, you know, each category, each brand that we represent, you know, we explain what are the different features, how to make the proper recommendations for each person's unique needs. Um, and then finally, um, how to do that, you know, written and, and all the communication to make that make sure that we're doing so respectfully, uh, with dignity, and that we do it in a, in a way that um, is inclusive. And yeah. so uh, that's kind of the end result of the training. And then there's a QA process. So many of our phone calls and, and emails and social media posts and all that go through actual a, a program <laughs> where we rate, rate the calls, we rate the, the, the emails and all that. And you get graded, right? So that we maintain that quality that we uh, are, that customers have come to know and love. Yeah, so it's like a white whole glove process. level of service in a way. Like I know huge. when I when I wrote the po- the post about y'all featuring CareWell, I was like, let me call this support number and just, you know, see what I get and just do my due diligence, you know, as a writer and product reviewer of y'all. I got the nicest person on the other end and was talking to him about all kinds of stuff. So, um, and I made up some scenario. It might have been the shoe one, frankly, I can't even remember, but um, to test to test it out a little bit. So um, it's it's clear that, you know, you, you've got a passion for believing in what you're doing. And then also I saw something, you didn't tell me this, it wasn't in your bio, but you um, recently got recognized as being Forbes 30 under 30 in retail and mm-hmm. e-commerce. So we'll, we'll link to that in the show notes, but what a nice validation about yeah. what you're doing. Yes. That's why I say we're very, very thankful that we can build a business. Again, I'm an entrepreneur since I was a kid. I mean, I've dreamt about doing this my entire life, but I, I never thought I'd be lucky enough to find a need that's really worthy like this, where like you can really make an impact in someone's life and then in millions of people's lives. I mean, I so it makes me teary-eyed because I'm just like, I'm so lucky. Like I'm not, right? Like being a caregiver is, you, you don't think that it's lucky, but it's given me a perspective on life is short, uh, you know, take the time that matters with your family, 
appreciate the, the small things. And I don't think I would have ever had that had I not um, gone through that experience, right? And I think caregiving is also really sad and taboo subject. And I always say like caregiving needs more light, more love, like more positivity, right? Yeah, because no I actually really enjoy spending a lot of time with my grandma. I Like I keep saying, she's the funniest person in the world. She's got so much sass and attitude and it just cracks me up. And sometimes a lot of the things are very sad, but, and you know, she could be very hard headed, but she just, it makes me laugh even more. Cause I'm like, I get it. You're frustrated, you know? And so one of the tips I always have is like, you know, with my mom's family and, and even with my dad's family, you really have to create a plan when you're caregiving mm-hmm. um, because life's going to come at you and you want to be prepared. But instead of making it like this somber activity of like, oh, we have to plan. Like that sounds scary. Like I would have wanted for the do- end or just plan for the living part or all for the it. living and the end. There's yeah. both. You got to plan for everything, right? Yep. Financially, you have to figure out who's going to take who to doctor's appointments. You've got to figure out um, who's going to pay for supplies, right? Funeral costs, all those different things need to be talked about. Yeah. Power of attorney. Yeah. Where do you want to live? Is it, you know, we we can't, don't promise that you can keep somebody in your house, you know, the whole time things will happen that might be out of your control. Exactly. Right. There's a lot of things like that people just don't want to do. Um, so I try to say like, do it, go into, instead of, you know, meeting at someone's house, go to a restaurant, do it over a drink. Make it an opportunity to connect with your family and and try to spin it in a positive way because you'll have more fun doing it. It'll feel less scary. And then it becomes a thing, right? And that's what I try to do with my mom. It's like, let's not make this a scary thing. Let's just talk about, okay, we need to get this done. Let's do one lunch, one day, right? To get one thing accomplished. And then, you know, we can check it off the list. And so it's more of like a positive thing. So that's kind of my take on, I think, where caregiving needs to go and how we talk about it. And um, yeah, because we're all none of us are getting out of here alive. So uh-uh. it's it's, it's going to happen. And it's funny you mentioned, like, tie it to something fun. I remember, like, I told my husband, I'm like, we need to update our wills. And I want the you know, we, I want this for my birthday present this year. <laughs> and he's like, you're sick. And I'm like, no, it's peace <laughs> of mind. Like it's, it's going to give everybody peace of mind, just knowing that we have this. And if we don't just do it and attach it to something like that, yeah, it may not happen. Um, and have a glass of champagne when you sign it. There you, you go. go. And there you go. You make it a positive experience. And then, you know, no one wants to do them. I get it. Make it fun. Make it fun. Yeah. You, I mean, your mom was a single, single mom and, you know, one of the pillars of self-care that we don't talk about enough too, I think is financial self-care, um, mm-hmm. you know, being responsible with our money as far as saving and spending and investing and, and all of that. And, you know, what are your thoughts on some of that stuff? Oh, it's a, it's a touchy subject, right? Um, I, I, since I was a kid, I've always been a saver. Uh, you know, I've been very cheap with my own money, you know, uh, because I always can see that my mom was a single mom. She, you know, uh, was a stay at home mom also caring for me and my sister. And, you know, it, it always occurred to me that like, I have to take care of my mom, you know, eventually. And so, um, I encourage everybody to start saving as early as possible, as early as possible. And the second thing too, is that there, there is this thing called um, long-term care insurance. And I hope everybody looks into it um, and takes out a plan if, if possible on themselves, or uh, if you're, if you're young enough, you can, um, because what it does is it, it, it helps cover the cost of long-term care uh, when you're older. Um, and so that is going to be, it's a gift that you can give to, you know, your children, um, that peace of mind. And um it's existed. Not many people know about it, but I really encourage people to to look into it. I think people think, and I know I thought this for a long time, that Medicare is going to pay yeah. for, for all long-term care, but Medicare does not pay for that. Medicaid, if you're you know in dire straits financially and you need help there, they will do that. Medicare will pay for some things like rehab after a hospitalization yeah. for a length of time. But for most, if you don't have long-term care insurance or your own personal savings, like it's a very, um, it's, it's, it's a very scary spot to be in. Absolutely. And, and, and and that's the the problem too, is just people just don't know, right. And it's too late. So I I try to tell everybody that like, save as much money as you can. Um, if you have parents try to 
try to get them like if they, and they have, and many times they do try to make sure that they're planning properly for the future, their own future, right. Mm -hmm. Where they're going to need extra care. Um, and then funeral planning as well. My grandfather just passed away, like I said, and, and he was, he had taken care of everything. And that was a huge like lift off my mom and her brothers and sisters to know that, you know, they through a really, you know, terrible time that there wasn't another stressor. Yes. Um, and so, you know, talking about it, having, you know, being prepared r- really helps in, in those really yeah, normalizes it. Times. I love that. Um, are you ready for the lightning round, Bianca? We, I'm going to ask you a couple of self-care prompts from my book. It's the just for you daily self-care journal. So there are no wrong answers by the way. So, okay. What object in your home brings you comfort? Um, I have a blanket from when I was a kid. <gasps> Ooh, true confession. What kind of state is that? And do you, is it, do you have a, and do you have a travel version of the blanket? No, I do not travel with it. Do okay. not travel with it. Uh-uh, too afraid to lose it. It has one tiny little hole, but I I've had it. It, it was my sis, little sister's blanket that I must've loved as a kid. Cause I took it and I'm, almost 30 years old and I still have it and sleep with it every night. Well, I have a friend who will, I won't mention because I don't have permission, but has her blanket ripped. And so she literally has a travel part of that blanket and she's a big time executive. Like, I love that. Um, okay. How about two of your healthy go-to snacks? Acai bowls. I eat every morning almost. Um, what do you put in them? I got to know. I have one right next to me. That's very <laughs> from this morning. Blueberry, blackberry, almonds, acai, and a little tiny bit of almond butter because otherwise it gets too, too sticky. Um, but that's it. Super simple. I love making, my daughter turned me on to making those. Um, and yes, smoothie bowls. I love them. Okay. Um, what kind of mental activities do you enjoy that keep your mind sharp? Huh? So I have a software background. Um, and so sometimes I still like to go in and, and look at the things that people haven't been able to like really solve in the company and try to solve them myself. Yeah. Um, many times I don't get anywhere, but you know, sometimes I do. And I, I could be like, guys, I got one, you know? And uh, those are the things that I, I, that like, if I had nothing to do all day, like I always tell my husband, like I would want to code all day and like, You're learn a geek out about that. About, yes. Around technology and all that. So well, I, I too have an IT background, but more on a on a functional functional side. Um, okay. Well, we we already know this one. Let's ask this one. What positive habit could you incorporate when you stop at a red light or when a TV commercial comes on? Oh, taking a deep breath. That's great. Sometimes I sometimes I'm like, oh, I, have, I feel like I haven't breathed in like a second, you know, like or a few hours. Even right now, when you asked that, I was like, oh, I haven't. You taken can't a say breathe without breathing. Yeah. It's Maybe like, we should uh, just put that on our like visor or something. Um, yes, yeah, so there's, and I think that's the thing for me with the self-care and why I wrote this journal is because I think a lot of people think it needs to be some big production, but it is these little teeny things that you do in the nooks and crannies of your life that make your life, you know, joyful and happy and healthy and sustainable, frankly. Yeah. Any other things that you would wish that we talked about that you want to share? Um, we cannot wrap this conversation up without mentioning one more thing or just something you want to say to caregivers. That that works too. No, I, th- the truth is, if you need help with anything, send us an email. We'll help you figure it out. Most people don't even re- know that, but like we'll respond to everything. Um, and so send us an email. We will find an expert if it's, a, it's something that you know we don't have knowledge of internally. We have many, many um, connections in the community to experts, to other people who, who write resources just like you. Um, and so just, you know, send us an email, reach out to Elizabeth. Um, she can come to us too. We're partners um, and we'll try to do our best to get you the answer. Yeah. We're not going to see you stuck. We want to make it, we can help, help people. I, that's what we're in your shoes, doing. right? Like we're, yes. we're just like you and we're getting through it. Um, and, and you will too. Right. And we're all here for each other. So I love that. That's wonderful. Thank you so much, Bianca, for that. And where do people find out more about you and more about CareWell? On carewell.com. We're also, if you uh, give us a call at 855-855-1666, we're available 24-7, English and Spanish, and on chat, 
So any way you want to reach us, we're, we're always going to be there for you. That's so good. Cause a lot of times that late night shopping is when it, when all the magic happens. So, and when you have time, right? When you have time. Exactly. Well, wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Bianca. I wish you success and uh, I look forward to our continued partnership. Absolutely. And thank you so much for having me. It was great speaking. Thanks for joining us today on the happy, healthy caregiver podcast on the whole care network. As always show notes that accompany today's episode can be found on my website happyhealthycaregiver.com. Just look under the podcast menu for today's episode image, and that will take you to the page with the links and information we spoke about today. You'll also find other resources on the website, along with links to purchase the Just For You Daily Self-Care Journal. When you purchase from my website, you'll get a signed copy and for a limited time, free shipping. If you've enjoyed what you heard today, consider subscribing to the show on your podcast platform. It really helps other family caregivers find the podcast and you'll automatically receive our bi-weekly shows in your podcast listening queue. Maybe while you're subscribing, consider leaving a five-star rating and review or just simply talk it up on your social channels. Let's stay connected. I'm on Instagram and Facebook as Happy Healthy Caregiver. And until we meet again, please take care of you. This is WCN, the Whole Care Network. You talk, we listen.